Today, uh, I'm going to be talking about building a simple Teams bot using webhooks. And this is something I had to do. Um, I had a demo that I had to do in literally a couple of hours and save going, creating a full fledged bot. I thought, okay, well, let me just see, is it, can I use webhooks? And turns out I could use webhooks. And this is just kind of just a story on uh, uh, why you should use them, why you shouldn't use them, and, and sort of how to get started. So. What, so what is a simple Teams bot? So this is something, this isn't a technical term, this is just something that I kind of coined when I was when I was making it. And what I would deem a simple uh, Teams bot is just a, a simple interaction. So you, you ask the bot a question, it gives you an answer. So for example, uh, what is the weather in London? Okay, it's cloudy and it's five degrees. You know, it could be uh, what is the time in Finland or, you know, whatever. Um, it's just a simple request and response. It's It's nothing more than that. So um, webhooks, why would you use webhooks? So uh, you can use um, outgoing webhooks from inside Teams. Obviously, this is nothing new. It's been around a long time. And the idea of a, an, a, an outgoing webhook, um, if you're not familiar, is to when you can at mention the webhook and then it can go off and effectively do a HTTP request to uh, an external service. So that external service could be within Azure, it could be within Amazon, it could be anywhere. Um, as long as it's obviously accessible from the internet. And the idea here is that in our scenario, we're using a webhook, which is actually uh, some code that's then going to return a response in, back into Teams. So it, you, you create it with inside a team, you have a security token, security token is then used to validate any requests coming from the webhook to then obviously know that it's come from a, a trusted source. So why would we use a webhook for a bot? Um, that there's this ultimately is it's simple. So if you if you don't want to create a really complex bot, you've literally just got a very simple use case. So for example, asking for the weather forecast, it's it's perfect for that sort of thing where you, you don't really need a, a branching past dialogue and many yeah, multiple questions. It's literally question and answer. So that's one reason. Another reason is time constraints. So you want to quickly build something. As I said, I had a couple of hours to build something and I, I didn't want to go through the process of having to create an app registration and get hold of the people that can grant me access and all that sort of stuff. And this kind of sidesteps a lot of that. And that is also a time saving, but also even if you had all the time in the world, in, not in all scenarios do you actually have access to be able to create an app registration or have access to the Azure uh, a portal in that tenant. And the idea here is that any person that's a member or an owner of a team can create an outgoing webhook and then they can literally host their 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 bot wherever they wherever they want. So you're not having to rely on uh, administrators to uh, to grant you access to uh, to create the bot for your tenant. So why would you not use a webhook for a bot? Um, Pretty much anything that wasn't in that in, in that previous slide, but ultimately it's things that are going to be more complicated. So, like I say, a branching path or an ongoing dialogue or things where you get a notification through from a bot, something like that. You're not really going to get done with a webhook. It's more just a, like I say, a simple interaction. No, another reason is when you're using a webhook, you have it's part of a team, so it's not really used for personal context. So you couldn't ask sensitive questions because anyone that's got access to the bot can then see any interactions, not just their own. Um, and then and finally, things like scalability. So because it, the webhook is assigned to a particular team, if you wanted then to assign that to 10 teams, then you have to create 10 outgoing webhooks uh, and manage them and manage the secrets and all that. And it just gets really complicated. And in that scenario, you'd be better off having a, a sort of fully fledged bot. So I've created a, a very simple solution here where we're going to get the weather from uh, from an API. Um, in this scenario, it's Open Weather Map API. And the, the simple interaction is you have a user, they're part of a team, they app mention the webhook, the webhook then gets called, it's an Azure function, that then queries the weather API and then returns the the, effectively the weather forecast if it's found, if, if it's a valid location, turns the weather forecast back to the Teams user in, in, in form of a, a bot activity or bot framework activity. Um, and in this case, we're attaching an adaptive card to make it uh, a bit more fancy than just text. So that ultimately is the solution. And what I'm going to do now is just do a quick demo of it. Um, so let me just 
change over to here. So this is Teams. Um, I've got it running in an Azure function. And if I now, the idea here is that I've created an outgoing webhook. So if I go into my team, under here I have a, one called Weather, very imaginative name. Uh, it's an outgoing webhook. That is then tied to an Azure function. Ultimately, it could be running anywhere, but in this case, it's it's an Azure function. And now within this team, I can at mention the bots. Okay, select the weather bots, and I'm just going to put London, London, the UK, and it will then go off and get the weather and then return. It is a consumption-based function, so there is a little bit of a, a warm-up going on there, but, um, but ultimately it returns the, the weather. And, and so the idea here is that you can put any location in, in, in the world, really. And as long as there's a um, matching location in the API, then it returns the, uh, returns the weather forecast, including any um, sort of icons associated to whatever the weather is for that day. So what I'll do now is quickly just go over the code. It's like I say, it is an Azure function, so it's it's effectively a single single file in this scenario um, written in TypeScript. And I'll just quickly, yeah, I've got a massive amount of time to go through line by line, but we'll just quickly go through each. So um, what we have here is we have an Azure function. The first thing we're doing is um, getting the authorization header from the request and also making sure there's a, a body to go along with the request. And the reason we need the authorization token is previously I mentioned that uh, an outgoing webhook has a security token and we then have to validate that the request is also from that security token and the way teams handles that is when it sends out an outgoing webhook it encodes the uh, the body using uh, the security token and creates a, a hmac um, and which is then added to the authorization header and effectively what we do here is we we store the security token uh, sort of with the function it then effectively generates the HMAC of the token and also the message, i.e. the body from the uh, from the request and make sure that, and then we, we effectively make sure that it lines up, that it's from, from the webhook in Teams and not just a random request from, from something else. Once we've validated it, we're then obviously stripping out all the text, stripping out any out mentions and just leaving the location name. We then call the weather API, um, with the location name and obviously the API key. If it's a valid location, we then get some more information, sort of the weather forecast you know, for the next week and um, you know what the low and the high is and the percent of the chance of rain and whatever else it comes back with. We then collate that data and we put it into an adaptive card. Um, by doing that, we effectively create a data object and then we've got the adaptive card. I won't go through all of it, but ultimately it's a it's, a, it's an adaptive card definition for Teams. We then create a template. We then insert the card data, which has got all the weather information into the into the template. Create a uh, an adaptive card, and then send that card along with the message uh, or the activity to Teams. And and we'll, obviously, if there's no location, we say that we can't find it. Otherwise, there's a we throw an error, and that's effectively it from the code. It's it's not a particularly complicated um, setup. It's it's pretty pretty straightforward. And if I just go back to the deck, I think we've got one more slide, which is just to say that there's a company blog post to go through it sort of in more detail. We've also got a code uh, sample on GitHub, and obviously if you need to uh, read more, then uh, yeah, reach out or let me know how you found it. Very, very cool, Lee. Excellent. Thank you so, so much. And, and really showing how, uh, how how quickly you can get a bot up and running and how useful Absolutely. it can be. So very, very nice job. And there's some questions, I think, in the chat. I'll let you review those as we move on to no our worries. next presenter. But thanks again. Very, very excellent. Thank you.